He, you will always be known as the man who turned around IBM. And just before the break, we were talking quite a bit about passion. You're passionate about a number of other things. Education to start. Where is your passion today? Well, it's still with education. I mean, Stephanie, there's one thing that's causing income inequality in this country. If there's one thing that's holding back our economic growth, if it's one thing that I think is contributing to the divisiveness in our country, it's that we're not educating our young people. The state of K-12 education in this country is truly devastatingly bad. I mean, one in five Americans reads below the fifth grade level. And realistically, how does that get changed? Realistically, realistically. not idealistic. Oh, no, no, we, ha we know exactly what it takes to change. We need high standards. We need better teachers, which means more pay for t the teachers, more pay for the better teachers, less for the poor teachers, better prepared teachers by, by getting rid of all these horrible ed schools. We need choice for parents. We need accountability for the How schools. How are we going to get there, though? How we're going to get there? We're going to get there with some very courageous governors and mayors because the schools in this country are run by the states. And we also need to bring in competition with charter schools. I mean, one of the reasons we have the best uh, collegiate level school system in the world is because we have competition. Competition for students, competition for faculty. We need to get these schools focused on the right things and we got to get the adults out of the way. Well, Lou, I'm so glad you went there because I have a small charity I work with in, in, in public schools to try to help. And the thing that struck me about this more than anything else is nobody's thinking about the kids. Oh, it's no. the adults all fighting with each other, whether it's the teachers or the teachers unions or the administration or the politicians. How do you get that aligned? This is not like a CEO of IBM who can say, we're all going to march in that direction and I can affect your pay. This is much more complicated. How do you get the adults to actually focus on the kids? I don't know, because that is the big problem, David. So let's take something like Common Core. Common Core was created by the states and it is absolutely essential that we have standards for what kids ought to learn when they graduate from high school. It's that simple. What should kids know when they graduate from high school? Math and English language. Guess what? We have politicians in this country trying to tear down Common Core. You know why? For their own political advantage. And they're destroying the opportunity of these kids so that they can appeal to Ooh, people. But before we go, we have to talk medical research for a moment. When we talk about politicians, I think about NIH funding and the fact that they have lost so much funding, it's turned to private groups or institutions to help move things forward. You're, you've obviously done a lot of work with the Broad Institute. Where do you stand right now? Okay, so Stephanie, you, you, you stated it quite correctly. I would say that we are in the most important scientific understanding, scientific discovery in the history of humankind. And there's no hyperbole there. We're starting to learn what makes life work, what makes life get extended, what causes diseases. This is the most exciting science. And why don't we vote to support that and to actually put money towards Good question, research. Stephanie. The NIH, which is the biggest supporter of biological research in this country, its budget is down 25% in real terms over the last 10 years. We are not investing in this important science and the Broad is thank goodness supported by incredible philanthropists and is doing a lot of the heavy lifting because it's hard we still don't understand much of molecular biology you know we we're promising people you know we'll take a little bit of your blood and all of a sudden we'll cure your cancer well we're way ahead of ourselves vice president biden was interviewed on 60 minutes last night and it was very compelling when he talked about cancer he said this could be like deciding where to land a man on the moon. If we simply decided as a country we could cure it. Do you think that's realistic? I think it's realistic if we put the, the, the resources behind it. There's no question about it. But, you know, we, we now have identified probably 100 different genes out of the 20,000 in our genome that are, are related to cancer. We haven't got them all. There are many, many more. And we don't know how they work together. We, but we will figure it out. We will figure out. What happens if we go after these pharmaceutical companies and regulate where they are pricing drugs? And Big Pharma says, you know what, we're going to cut R&D. Then what happens? What could be the impact? Because we rely on a lot of these companies to do the work for us. Well, first of all, I'm, I'm really not a fan of regulated prices in any industry. I, I just don't think it works. Um, and, uh, but the pharma companies 
are very important. They tend to work out at the far end of how can we get clinical uh, applications into patients. What the BRO does is it focuses on the really hard underlying questions of why to cell. We, we, we create 400 billion new cells in our body every day. 400 billion every day. 300 million die every minute. So what is that process that leads those cells to, 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 to die and to form? And how do we intervene in that process? Because that is the process that creates the mutations that cause disease. A lot of work left to do. And, uh, and I'm delighted that the Broad's right at the center of it.